the quickest way to become insulin resistant in less than 24 hours and some solutions. The key here is that we know that sleep deprivation impairs the ability of fat cells to respond to the hormone insulin. One way to become insulin resistant in a short span of time is partial sleep deprivation. We know that 75% of adults are sleeping less than seven to nine hours per night and chronic poor sleep is associated with type two diabetes. Experimental studies have demonstrated that impaired glucose control, which is blood sugar, following re sleep restriction with a single night of restriction reduces the whole body insulin sensitivity by 20%. One poor night of sleep. If you think that one poor night of sleep is not a big deal, keep listening. We know that a single night of partial sleep deprivation induces insulin resistance in multiple metabolic pathways in healthy subjects. This is from the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. Furthermore, four nights of poor sleep reduced insulin sensitivity by 16% and their fat cell sensitivity to insulin by 30%. This is the equivalent of metabolically aging someone 10 to 20 years, according to Dr. Matthew Brady, an associate professor of medicine at University of Chicago in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Again, this study in particular had a small sample size of seven but it still leads us to understand the impact of poor quality sleep and how it influences metabolic health. Some of the mechanisms that impact metabolic flexibility in relationship to sleep impact altered peripheral insulin sensitivity and changes to metabolic profile, including favoring fatty acid transportation may actually interfere with insulin signaling. Another way that you can impact your insulin resistance propensity is being a shift worker. Years ago, I used to work nights in the ER. It was not easy in my 20s, and I recall how many of my 30, 40, 50 something year old peers, how haggard and tired they were. We know that shift work actually induces circadian misalignment, induces fatty acid metabolism, gene profiles, and compromises insulin sensitivity in human skeletal muscle. Remember from other videos that I've done, insulin resistance starts in our muscles. This is why maintaining muscle mass with age is so critically important. We know that circadian misalignment creates a substantial reduction in insulin sensitivity in our muscles. And new research also suggests that peroxome proliferator activated receptors or PPAR pathway has a role in its effect. Previous epidemiological research has suggested that those that work night shifts are at greater risk for diabetes. Additionally, animal models with liver specific or muscle specific disruption of clock genes, these are the genes that regulate circadian rhythms, develop insulin resistance as well. In this small sample size, there were 14 lean men with two different circadian misalignment protocols. There was a rapid day night shift resulted in a 23% reduction of insulin sensitivity mainly due to muscle insulin resistance. So you're noticing this theme, maintaining muscle mass is so important for maintaining insulin sensitivity. Next, we'll talk about late night snacking and eating. Um, this is why I remind people we really don't wanna be eating two to three hours before bed. We know the connection between timed eating and sleep and obesity is strong. That overnutrition can disrupt circadian rhythms and change adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is another way of saying fat tissue. New research has shown that energy release may be the mechanism through which our circadian clocks control energy balance. Daytime is the ideal time in the light environment of the Earth's rotation when it is most optimal to dissipate energy as heat. This is why we're more insulin sensitive during the day as opposed to later in the day. Insults to the body clock are going to be insults to metabolism. This is a direct quote from Dr. Joseph Bass, who is a Northwestern medicine endocrinologist and a Charles F. Kettering professor of medicine. He notes that high fat, high carb diets are hard on our circadian clocks and especially fat tissue. As animals become more obese, they start to eat more when they should be asleep. In this animal mouse model, they show that nocturnal high fat diets were fed to them in inactive light periods or during their active dark periods within a week. Mice fed during light hours gained more weight comparatively to those fed in the dark. There are some questions about mechanisms within the circadian clock and creatine metabolism and improved thermogenesis. So here are some solutions, ways that we can avoid doing things that are going to make us more prone to insulin resistance. Number one, no surprises, 
exercise. We know that a single bout of exercise positively impacts glucose regulation for up to 24 hours. And two weeks of high intensity interval training has been shown to attenuate the insulin response to an oral glucose tolerance test after one night of sleep deprivation. This doesn't mean that you're doing two weeks of nonstop hit, it just means that targeted hit has a very, very beneficial impact on attenuating the impact of sleep deprivation. And in this 2017 study, they talk about the high intensity interval training attenuates insulin resistance induced by sleep deprivation in healthy males. I know you're probably wondering why are there not more studies done on women? I can't really answer that. I just know that in many instances, it's easier to do it on men because you don't have to confound with all the variables of a menstrual cycle. I'm interrupting this video to talk to you about my amazing understanding macros guide that you can grab below. It is super helpful for fully understanding protein, fat, and carbs, and how you can utilize them to help support your body in perimenopause and beyond. Next are sprint intervals. We know that this can also be very beneficial for helping with insulin sensitivity, adjusting your macronutrients with more protein, at least 30 grams per meal, more soluble fiber if you tolerate it. I always say more green things, green vegetables, salads, adding in spices like turmeric, ginger, and garlic that have shown promising research in supporting insulin sensitivity. I also think about the wonderful benefits of green tea, especially EGCG, which is epi catechin gallate, which helps increase insulin sensitivity. You'd probably have to have at least two cups a day. You can consider apple cider vinegar, and I've certainly done other videos on this that you can reference. Hydration and electrolytes, and my favorite is Element. And then just overall, just being physically active, moving your body. We know that movement activates GLUT4 transporters in our muscles to help augment the insulin response. And consider supplementation with things like berberine, myo-inositol, that can be very helpful. I do find that myo-inositol is very multifunctional. It can be helpful for blood sugar regulation. It can help with sleep architecture. It can help with mood. Berberine in and of itself works different mechanistically. It can improve insulin sensitivity and production. And we know it reduces glucose production in the liver, which is gluconeogenesis, and it helps slow carb absorption in the gut. It also is a potent antimicrobial, so some people may not tolerate berberine. And in studies, it's shown it's been, it has been as effective as the oral medication glucophage or metformin in many studies. Good old myo-inositol. This is my personal favorite. We know it is involved in the intracellular transmission of insulin's metabolic signal and important for the oxidative use of glucose and its storage as glycogen. It also inhibits duodenal glucose absorption and reduces blood glucose. It also has an impact on muscle glucose uptake. And here's a fun fact fact, states of high glucose increase the need for inositol mechanistically in the body. And we know based on research that less myo-inositol intracellularly worsens insulin resistance, impairs antioxidant defenses, and increases oxidative stress and glycation, all things we want to avoid. Hey, if you like this video, you guys are going to love this video and I'll see you there.